In this video, we're going to take a look at No Way Out, which is a reverse engineering challenge from the Pico CTF 2023. It's actually a game hacking challenge. As you can see here, we've got a Windows game or a Mac game to download. And the description doesn't really tell us much other than we need to put the flag that we find inside this format of Pico CTF and the curly braces. So if you already follow the Integrity YouTube channel, you might know that I've been doing a game hacking series there, focusing on Cheat Engine for now. And I thought this challenge would be a good demonstration to see how we can use Cheat Engine. And if you enjoy this video, I hope you go over to the Integrity series. I'll leave a link to that in the description, as well as a little card in the top right. But let's get started on the challenge. So I've already got the Windows game downloaded. I've extracted the folder. So we've got this win folder and we have this pico.exe and then some other folders in here. Notice that we have this Unity player and Mono Bleeding Edge. So this is an indication that it's a Unity game. It's created with the Unity game engine. And the cool thing about that is that we'll be able to actually decompile the code. But just before we do that, let's actually take a quick look at the game. So I'll just open this up, pico.exe. You can see it came up there, made with Unity. And the game loads. One thing that's kind of unfortunate is inside my VM, this doesn't normally happen with games, but inside my VM, I can't move more than 180 degrees around. You see the, the mouse basically locks. I did try to just run the game on my host machine and it worked okay. So it seems to be something to do with the VM and I tried changing like the mouse settings in it, but I don't know, I couldn't get it working, but that's okay anyway. One thing we would need to do if we were using Cheat Engine, we want to do Alt and Enter to make this windowed mode just so that we can easily get in and out of the window. But it's still not a great format because we can't actually resize the window. I like to have the game running alongside Cheat Engine. You can see here we can press Escape to go into the options, but there isn't actually anything to change the size of the window. I think you might be able to do something in the shortcut. Actually, if you like create a window shortcut, you can put it into windowed mode and maybe set the size of it there as well. But this is the game anyway. We've got this kind of just a box with not much in it. And we can, there was a ladder behind me, which I can go up, but I'm kind of struggling to turn the camera around now. Um, and then on the other side, let me actually try and I'm going to do alt and then let's try and move around a bit. All right, it's not great, but basically we do have a big white flag over in a corner behind me. Oh, you can see it now. Okay. So that's particularly of interest. Maybe we want to try and get over to that flag, but well, actually we know we need to do that because it says escape to find the flag at the top of the screen. But obviously there are walls all around here. So we want to try and get up that ladder. If we do that, we still can't actually move. Let me, again, I'm going to try and play around with the camera a little bit here. There we go. All right. So yeah, you can go up to this ladder. And as you can see, we can get up here okay. But if we try and jump over this wall, we actually can't get through it. So there is an invisible wall blocking us. So we want to try and get over to that flag. But before we look at this with Cheat Engine, which will be going through one of the techniques that's been used in the series that I've done on the Integrity channel. First, let's go and actually decompile this code because it is Unity. If we go into our data here and have a look at Manage, we've got this assembly C -sharp .dll which with Unity games, that's, we've got a lot of stuff in here, but a lot of this isn't going to be of interest to us. This file will be. So we want to go and try to decompile it. And I'm going to do that with dnspy. So open this up. I'm going to go and open the DLL. You might want to close all if you have a lot of stuff in here, which I did initially, but I've removed them already. So I'm going to go and open. Let's go to the desktop. We'll open up Pico Data Managed and then Assembly C Sharp. And you can see we've got this open. We don't need to worry about these other libraries that it's opened. We just keep drilling down into this. And you see where we just have these curly braces and nothing else. That's the most interesting thing for us to look at. So you can see in here, we have some classes. We've got this collider event. We've got this APTX. And then we've got this module as well. And if we drill down into these, we can select this one collider event. And then you'll see in here, we have a class. We've got some fields here as well. So we've got event, we've got, we can click on each one of these and have a look at them individually. We have this method here, which is doing on trigger enter. So that looks interesting. We're interested particularly in anything that says collision or collider because we know that the goal is to get through one of those walls, whether it's invisible or not. And obviously there's an issue where we're colliding with the wall. So if we can kind of get rid of that, then we might be able to walk through it. We've also got this Evolve game, so we can click down here and this has a lot more stuff in it. 
can see here like player controller and we've got a lot of different values in here. Here's our crouch speed. We've got crouch height. This is a float value. Can move. We could go and start adjusting values. Here's our look x limit. You might also have a look at some of these functions here. So we've got these methods, we've got start, we've got update. And you can actually see what's happening at the beginning. And we could potentially just go and start changing some of these things around, point at different methods, remove things, add things. We've got our on trigger enter. So we can see here if other tag, oh, I should probably zoom in a bit, not really on that one over here. All right, so we've got this ladder. If other tag equals ladder and this dot can climb in, then it's going to set. So it's basically going to say, we can't run because we're currently climbing. We are currently climbing, so it's going to set that to true. But you don't need to understand everything. I'm not uh, an expert with C Sharp, but I'm not seeing anything there to do with the flag. So let's go back to our other class here, this aptx. If we go into this one, we actually see a mysterious game object, which sounds interesting. We've got a player here as well, and we've got this on trigger enter. And the on trigger enter says if the collision dot dot game object is equal to this dot player, then set the mysterious object to active. So it sounds like if we collide with this game object, and it has to be our player, if the thing that collides with the game object is our player, then the, this mysterious thing is going to appear. So looking at this, we could probably guess that that white flag, if we collide with it, if our player collides with that game object, then this mysterious object is going to appear. So we can go ahead and make some changes here. Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a copy of this one. I'm going to just back this up because we want to solve it afterwards with Cheat Engine. So I want to be able to re revert the changes. So that's fine. Let me then have a look at what we can add here. So I'm going to take a copy of this line because this is the line we want to occur. But at the moment, the only way we can do that is by colliding these two objects. And if we can't get through the wall, we can't do that. But we know that with some of these other functions, let me try and find one. We've got these start and we've got update. So this start method is going to be executed whenever the object is created, presumably. That's the start of the object. So why don't we try and add something similar to the aptx? So let me try and right click this and say we want to create a new method. We can also edit class, add class, but there isn't a method here that we want to edit. So yeah, let's say we want to create a new method. This is going to pop up. I'm going to call it start. And this is where we're going to put this. Actually, I'm just going to oh, still need to apparently edit that as well. So we've created it, but now we need to right click and say edit method. And this is going to pop up. And we want to put this line in here then. So this dot mysterious dot set active true private void. So it's returning nothing. This is what we're saying what we want it to return. It's returning nothing. And then I think we can just do start here. Give our curly braces. OK, let's see, does that compile? All right, so it's compiled. That looked OK. So yeah, we've just created a method here. It's returning nothing. It's going to start, and it's going to set this active to true. So there's no condition now. We're not waiting for that collision. So hopefully, if we now save this, let's try and save it. Let's do OK. Let's minimize it, and let's try and run the game again. We run the game, and look what's on the screen. We've got our flag. So our flag is welcome to Unity. And you can see it just instantly popped up because we set that to start whenever the object was instantiated. And that was at the beginning of the game. So that's one way to solve this challenge. Let's see how we can do it another way. So I'm going to revert the changes we made. Let's go and take a copy of the, well, I'll just delete this one. And I'll change this one from being a copy. And this time we'll boot the game again. I'm going to close down DNSpy. Oh, and let's open up Cheat Engine. So I've got Cheat Engine right here. I do like to be able to just have the game on the left and then Cheat Engine on the right, but I can't do that here. But let's select the process. So we're selecting pico.exe. It's now attached to the process. Cheat Engine is attached to the process. And if you haven't seen any of those videos I've done on the Integrity channel yet, essentially what we want to do here is basically search for values that are in the game. So if we can, if we know that the player's health is 10, we can search for 10 and there'll be probably millions of results, thousands anyway. And they're all of the tens in memory. And then we could go and take a little bit of damage. So we've got nine health and then we say, okay, that value that was 10 is now nine. 
And it's going to keep then filtering down until we end up finding our health in memory in RAM. And then from there, we can just directly edit that value. In this case, we're not interested in our health. We're interested actually in our position. So what we could do, I just spawned there. Let me, we don't know what our initial value is. Generally, our position will have like X, Y, and Z coordinates, right? Because it's a 3D game. If it was 2D, we'd have our X and our Y. So like left and right and jumping up and down. And it's generally a float value. So I'm going to change this value type to float. And then I'm going to say the initial value is unknown. So that's the type of scan because it, it's not like health where we can say, all right, we've got 10 bars. So we'll search for 10. We don't know where our position is. We don't know what the current position is. So we'll do first scan unknown. And we get 177 million results. So that's way too many for us to filter through. It doesn't even pop up with them here because there's so many. So what we do now is set this to increased value. And then I'm going to move forward a little bit and hope that that's increased. There we go. I'm going to go next. And now we've got just over 1 million. I'm going to do that again. Move forward a bit. I'm doing Alt and Tab to get to the next thing. And then let me move backward a little bit. So now we're going to do decreased. And again, next, and we've got 233,000. Let me go back again. Next, we've got 78,000. Let's do unchanged. And I'm going to put this on repeat. And it's basically just any values that have changed are going to be removed because we haven't moved since we last did the decrease. And I could actually do some other things here. Let's move around our camera, but without moving our position. Let's do escape to bring up this help menu. And we're basically just trying to take a lot of different actions to try and filter out the possibilities. And we've got down to 130 results, 125. We keep going. Eventually, it's going to stop going down further. So let's try and do the increase again. I'm going to go here. I'm going to say increase value. And we'll do that again. Let me try and narrow it down as much as possible. Because if we have too many values here, as soon as we stop playing around with them, we're going to find that some of them will actually crash the game. I think this is a nice amount. We've got 27. And these are all values here. If we had this on like a split screen, I'd be able to move forward and backwards and you'd actually see these changing, but I can't do that. So instead, we want to try and find out which one of these is our position. And what I normally do here is basically select half of these. We'll hit space to select them and it's freezing these values. And now I'm going to try and move. And notice whenever I move, it's kind of glitching out, which is interesting. Let's try and do that with the first one. See, the first one looks okay. So what I'll do then is remove that first one. Oh, I didn't mean to remove all of those. Okay, let's try and... You see the way these ones are the same, actually. Let me try with these. Let me go... See how I'm frozen? And all of these are the same. So what if I was to just change this and say, that's actually a 12. Notice it just went straight back. All right, well, if we freeze this and say, it's a 12. What it's basically going to do is every time that automatically resets to its previous value, this 3.684, instead will be freezing at 12. And look what's happened. I'm outside the wall. And that's basically that. Let me go and untick that now so it's not like freezing on us. Because we're through the wall now. There's nothing to worry about. And we can basically just run over to this flag. And yeah, that's how we can teleport through walls. That's one way of solving this challenge. Again, there are plenty of different ways, and even in Cheat Engine, you notice we have this mono feature at the top where we can actually activate mono features, and then we can go in and have a look at some of the stuff that we saw in DN Spy. So if we actually start drilling through this stuff, this is the same stuff. We've got this assembly C sharp, and we have our collider, we have our methods, we've got our fields in here, our different properties. So the two methods that I've shown in this video aren't the only methods. There's a lot of different ways that you could do this. And after the Cheat Engine series is finished over on the Integrity channel, I'm going to be looking at some other techniques like injecting DLLs and looking at network traffic in games and a variety of other interesting hacks, which hopefully you'll follow along for. Integrity's been getting a lot more games companies on as like bug bounty programs. So that's the main reason for me making that series on the channel at the moment. And hopefully that continues so that I can do some more cool research myself because I find this stuff very interesting. Anyway, let's close this down. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, as ever, leave them down below. Thanks.